At first glance, Anshu to Zushimaru felt like the perfect blend of anime and 1950s Japanese cinema, which is great for me because those black and white movies were partially responsible for getting me into anime in the first place. Moreover, Zushimaru is a Toei 10th anniversary special two years in the making inspired by the novel Sancho the Bailiff written by the famous Japanese author Ogai Mori. Coincidentally, there was also a film adaptation of that same story by the same name seven years earlier in 1954. The story revolves around Zushimaru, son of what's essentially their governor. In the beginning, his father is ordered to appear before the emperor regarding a crime they believe he committed. Subsequently, Zushimaru and his family attempt to travel to the capital to clear his name. Unfortunately, things don't go as planned as they get mixed up with slave traders and the majority of the plot revolves around their hardships and their attempts to escape. Needless to say, this does not make for a good children's anime movie. I haven't read the novel it's based on, but I have seen the 1950s film, and it seems like they removed so much context from the anime by using metaphors to soften the blow of its adult content. If you want to make a good children's movie, I have a list of things you should do. 1. Don't adapt stories with abduction, slavery, torture, suicide, and forced prostitution. That's all. I don't want to be overly negative, but having seen Sancho the Bailiff, I have to admit this would have been a better movie if they had just rotoscoped it. The original film depicted Zushimaru's father teaching him morals, and these teachings come to fruition after he escaped from slavery. Unfortunately, both of these scenes were altered in the anime in a way that doesn't do it any favors. The anime opens on Zushimaru's father being framed for burning down the emperor's forest, and Zushimaru has the only evidence to clear his name. However, this is of no future importance, and the final arc was altered by introducing a storm cloud that transforms into a giant spider for Zushimaru to fight. I can't remember, but I don't even think he drew a sword in the original movie, so I don't know what they were doing there. Although the bulk of each version centers around Zushimaru and Anju's struggles with slavery, it felt like a monotonous happenstance in comparison to the original film. They altered so much in the anime that any meaning was lost. Instead of having to perform hard labor of cutting trees, Zushimaru gets the wild animals to do it instead. Anju was tortured by hot iron in the movie, but but the anime depicts this as only a dream. She also interacted with numerous other slaves, which further sets the oppressive tone, but in the anime, she just has to fetch water and fails comedically at that. Everything about this movie feels like they were capitalizing on the name of the original author and recent movie, which I assume was somewhat popular. Although the story leaves much to be desired, I think its art is its main appeal. I love its colors, depiction of nature, and traditional Japanese architecture. They even continue their signature style of blending real-life footage in with animation. Both this and their previous 1960 release Sayuki used actual footage of water, and I thought it looked beautiful. However, I can't say which of the two I thought was animated better since Sayuki mostly depicted monkeys and highly cartoonized humans. Although I don't plan on making reviews of them, I look forward to watching more 50s and 60s anime with the same aesthetic. Still, I doubt any of them will ever come close to my favorites from Japanese cinema at the time, such as Harakiri or Akira Kurosawa's several legendary films. Overall, I give Zushimaru a 5.5 out of 10. It's worth watching for appreciating its animation, but I don't think it's an enjoyable story and far too bleak to be enjoyable for children either. If you're interested in its plot, I recommend Sancho the Bailiff, as it's currently available for free on YouTube. Not sure if that's legal or not, but it's there. If you like its art, you can also check out Sayuki. Although I prefer the style of Zushimaru, I think Sayuki is a more historically relevant movie since it's an adaptation of Journey to the West. Even fans of the 90s through 2010 shonen anime would enjoy spawning countless connections between this and some of their favorite anime like Naruto or Dragon Ball. If you know of any other pre-70s anime closer to the actual Japanese cinema of the time, I'd love to know, so leave me a comment. I don't usually talk about this type of anime because it's so old, but I have seen a decent amount of them from the 20s to the 60s, so if you'd like to hear me talk more about these, let me know. Maybe I'll make a list video or something. Thanks for watching, I'll see you tomorrow with Tonari no Sekikun.